Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're going to be doing some work on a Sega Master System. Um, so for those of you that don't know, this is the first console that Sega released, um, and it competed with the uh, NES. And uh, it's a really nice system. It's got some great games. It uh, graphically is superior to the NES, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, it's a really fun console to, you know, mess around with if you never had the opportunity. Um, so, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be installing uh, this kit here by Tim Worthington. This is a FM sound chip uh, modification that we can add to the Master System. What it does basically is it adds a Yamaha um, FM synth chip, and um, there are a, a bunch of games that were released both in the United States and Japan um, that can be used either with the PSG sound chip that's built in here or the Yamaha FM chip. Uh, however, in the United States, the master systems that were produced and sent here don't have that Yamaha chip on board. So this mod basically gives that same functionality that a Japanese console would have. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that, and I'll show you all the steps needed to, uh, to, to get started. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the master system is actually very simple to disassemble. It only uses Phillips screws, and uh, there's six on the bottom that you just have to take off. And then once you do that, um, the case might take a little bit of effort to kind of snap open, but it just snaps open. And then what we're going to have to do next is uh, we're going to actually have to make some minor modifications to this RF shield over here because uh, this board is going to basically sit right here and angle forward. So, so I'm going to have to cut away at some of this material here. And uh, we're also going to have to do some soldering to just get this board prepared. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take this RF shield off. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's simple. It's just basically getting rid of all of the, the visible screws that you see. And we'll come back, and we're going to start making modifications to this shield. All right, so I've got the shield removed. And uh, what we're going to be doing is getting rid of this whole section here and over here, um, basically up to this flap. That should be enough so that the, um, the FM sound adapter is going to fit without any any issues. So I'm going to start by just flattening all these guys out and just bending this back and forth until this piece comes off. Okay, so that took a lot longer than I was expecting, and it was something that was kind of boring to put on camera, so I decided to just cut away and, and take care of it off camera. But you can see I actually removed more material than I needed to, um, and that was just because, like, getting all of these parts off and then this off was proving to just be very time-consuming and tedious. Maybe if I had, like, a Dremel or a vise, this would be a lot faster. Um, but yeah, in the end, I decided to just kind of cut it off here and cut it off here and just get rid of this whole section so there's plenty of room for the FM board uh, to coexist. Now, some of you might be asking, why don't you just throw away the entire RF shield altogether? And, you know, that's fair. You could do that. But in the case of the Master System, the RF shield actually serves a purpose apart from removing uh, or shielding the sy system from radio frequencies. It also serves as a heat sink. So over here, it connects up directly to the heat sink to the 7805 voltage regulator. Um, so I didn't want to get rid of it. I want to keep it because it actually serves that purpose and it helps keep the system cooler. So so yeah, so I did this and uh, this should work. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and get this board installed. All right, so we've got our FM board here. And the first thing we got to do is we got to plug this edge connector in. And this is going to make a direct connection on the back of the master system. You just literally pop this thing in. So it's really not that difficult. Um, one thing though is that you don't want to solder in this connector perpendicular like this and that has to do with the shape of the master systems uh, case it's sloped so this will bump up against the top and it won't fit so you actually have to kind of put it at an angle like this and then solder everything into position the other thing I'm gonna do is I have to solder in this little uh, connector here this is for the switch and it's gonna go right here and the connections are gonna be facing um, out towards uh, towards this crystal oscillator over here
All right, so I've uh, taken the newly installed uh, FM soundboard and I've plugged it into its little cartridge slot here. And so you can see the angle is, is good, so it shouldn't interfere in any way with the case. And uh, I've also gone ahead and I've cut this wire, and this is basically what the inputs are um, for, the, um, for the board. And they're going to go right here. This is an American um, master system. If you have different models, the positioning of this might vary. Um, all of that information is listed on the Tim Worthington uh, website, and I'm going to provide a link for that in the description. So you'll notice what I did was I cut the wire, and then I stripped this outer shielding. And then it exposes three things. It exposes the two wires that are inside, and then this is the uh, the, the ground. This is the shield on the uh, outer core of the wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus here on this capacitor. Specifically, this is C37. I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to be putting the positive end um, with this red wire, I believe. Is that right? Uh, no, actually, sorry. I've got it flipped around. The white wire is going to go over here on the positive side. The red wire is going to go on the negative side. And then this shield wire, I'm going to basically scrape away a little bit of the solder mask right over here. This is ground right here, so I'm just going to scrape away a little bit of this, and we're going to solder it directly to the, to the chassis ground. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in, and we'll get right back to it. All right, so everything is basically installed now. There's only one more thing left to do. We have to install a toggle switch, a little tiny toggle switch that comes with the kit. And this is necessary because you need to be able to alternate between using the PSG sound, uh, the Japanese um, FM sound, or uh, this third option, which I think is to enable it on a small subset of games. So uh, the question is, where am I going to mount this? Um, because um, you know, it means that I either have to drill a hole into the case, or maybe I can use one of the existing ports. So what I've decided to do is to remove this RF modulator, because uh, the owner of this is never going to use RF, um, and uh, they're only using either composite video or RGB, so, so they really don't have any need for this. And so that gives me two places where I could potentially uh, attach this switch without doing anything destructive to the shell. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and desolder this RF um, modulator, and uh, it'll be set aside. It could technically be added back in if the person wants to do that. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and remove that now. And then at that point, it's just a matter of simply attaching the switch to the case. Okay, so everything is fully assembled, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys how the switch came out in the end. So, so you saw in the last cut, I removed the RF modulator. So what I did was I had a little washer in my pile of spare parts, and that just kind of gives it some extra 
uh, spacing, and then I just kind of fit it right into where the channel select switch is. And now it toggles from up and down for the different modes, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, I prefer doing something like this than drilling a hole. I mean, of course, if someone wants that, I can always drill a hole, but I like this just because it's a no-cut solution, and it's reversible. If I ever wanted to get rid of this mod, I could easily uninstall it, and then just take the original RF modulator and put it back in. Okay, so we're going to plug this thing in, and we're going to test it out and see how it does. Okay, so I've got a game here called Gavellius, and this is one of those examples that has both FM sound and the PSG sound built into it. So, uh, right now, what you're listening to is the PSG version of the soundtrack. So I'm going to go ahead and power down the console, flip the switch, power it back on, and then we should hear the FM sound version. Okay, so here's the same game, and this is with the FM sound enabled. So you can hear it sounds pretty different, and um, I don't know, I think it depends on which game you're listening to. I, I really like it either way. Some of them have kind of a more nostalgic feel for me because I remember them when I was a kid, but um, some of them I've never played before, so it's nice to hear the different versions and, uh, and try it out. Alright, so uh, that's it for this mod. I hope you guys liked it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. And um, yeah, I'll have more videos out like this every week. And it'd be great if you could uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, that really helps out a lot. And uh, yeah, thanks again everyone for watching. And I will see you guys next time.